Welcome to episode three of Tracker for Beginners. In this video, I wanna walk you through a few more features of how to use the graphs in Tracker so that you can get the most out of your video analysis. Uh, but first I wanna take care of a couple of housekeeping items. Um, in some of the videos you've uploaded, you might have seen notifications like this one. This popped up as a result of the video that I uploaded here involving collisions between two carts. Um, and I wanted to walk you through what this means. So it says some frame durations differ from the mean by more than 20%. Basically, when you upload a video, it's a series of images. And these are the images that you click through uh, when you are tracking your, your item manually. And each of those frames can have a slightly different duration. So they can have a slightly different time step, delta T. Um, and Tracker can usually handle those, but it flags this warning if they are if they vary by more than 20%. So this is the frame lagged somewhere or it sped up too much, and it will give you the frame numbers that it recommends excluding. Now I have a lot in this list, and so Tracker has given me a recommendation that I keep my clip within uh, frames 1924 to 3195. I haven't gone over this video yet, but I'm guessing that is plenty to work with. So when you have this window come up, you really have two options. One is you can go back and get another video and hope that you don't get this error, but you don't really have a lot of control over what your phone does with this video. So the best way to avoid this is to just proactively take a longer video and do a few runs of whatever experiment it is you're working with. So for example, on this video, I've got these carts colliding together, together several times. I'm pretty confident that at least one of them will work out. And so the other option is just go with the video you have and just note these two, because basically this, this is the safe region. So before 1924 is a problem region, right? So before 1924, there's all these different issues. And after 3195, there's another problem issue. So a uh, problem area. So there's more issues over here. And the ones in between that are kind of few and far between. So they're not going to impact your analysis all that much. So I've gone ahead and opened a little blank notepad here uh, to keep myself, uh, uh, to give myself a note to stay between 1924 and uh, let's see, 3195. So I'm just gonna keep that off to the side as a reminder for me of which frames I want to look at. Um, I'm now going to put that off to my other screen. I'll bring that back on when we need it. And then basically you say, okay, you could click on don't show this again if you want to never have to worry about it, but sometimes this might be bad enough that you have to go back and redo the video because you don't want a bad video to get you bad data. The only good source of bad data is bad data that changes our fundamental theories of physics. And I don't think you're going to do that with Tracker. Anyway, so you just click okay on here. And then we'll proceed with our method as usual. Um, one other little piece of housekeeping that I want to point out. You might have noticed this little note up here about memory in use. This is just something to keep an eye on as your video is, is processing um, because the original value for this maximum is kind of low in my opinion. Um, so you, you just wanna keep an eye on this. If this number that you're using gets close to this number that is the maximum, all you have to do is click on this select memory size, and then just enter a higher number, right? So you just increase this. I think I've increased mine past the maximum that it can go. Yeah, I originally put in 1417. It's gonna tell me that 1370 is the maximum. So you might as well go ahead and put it at the maximum. Um, Tracker was first created, uh, you know, several years ago. And so I think any computer you're working with should be able to handle it just fine. I suppose if you're working with maybe a, uh, with maybe a tablet or something, it might have a little bit more limited memory, but you should be fine to go ahead and max this out. Okay, so let's get on with the video for today. I know that my video needs to start later than 1924 in terms of frames. Um, let's see, we're moving in, we're moving in. This is just fast forwarding through my many attempts at getting a decent video here. And okay, let's, okay, so here, I, here, here is actually where I would like to start because here I've got uh, some tape added onto the carts to make them easier to follow. So we're just gonna move in until Brian starts uh, the actual experiment here. Uh, so I'm getting the red car in place, I'm getting the blue car in place. I'm about to launch the blue car. Okay, so here comes my hand ready to push. I'm gonna uh, uh, just keep inching this forward until I get the cart released. Okay, there the cart is released. So we're gonna set this to be our starting point. We are within the window now. So as a refresher, we need to be between 1924 and 3195. We're at 2258, which fits within that window. So we are good to go there. 
So we're gonna set this as the starting point, set start frame to slider. And then we're going to let them do their little collision. These are colliding via magnets. And you can see this one bounces back a little bit. This one moves forward. Let's go ahead and get as much as we can out of that one. There we go. And now we'll set this one to be the end. And, I've, and I'm at 2314 now for the end point, which is still within the, the window here. So you see this window is pretty broad going from 1924 to 3195. And the clip I needed was only 2258 all the way to 2314. So the window that I needed for the clip is much, much smaller than the window that Tracker recommended. That's usually going to be the case that the, the, the clip you're looking at is usually pretty uh, brief. All right, now we just follow the same steps we did last time. So we need to use a calibration stick. So we're going to find our meter stick here. Again, I've clicked on uh, the little drop down here, clicked on calibration stick, and now we'll do shift click one end of the meter stick and then shift click the other end of the meter stick. And then we will correct tracker that this is one meter. So now I know that this one meter here on blue matches the one meter here in the video. So now my, my uh, links are correct. Now let's work on the axes. Again, you don't have to worry too much about getting the axes straight on the camera because you can always adjust it here. And so we're just gonna make this X axis parallel to the cart track here. So there we've got it pretty well parallel. So they should be moving along the X axis only, not along the Y axis. Okay, now let's go back to the beginning of the clip. And now what I've got, what, what makes this video different and what I wanna spend, uh, what I wanna focus on in this video is how to handle two different objects. Cause we've got the blue car and the red car. And so what we need to do is create two point particles. So let's go with create point mass. So we'll create our first one. And uh, for this one, let's, this one's already in a red marker. So let's make this one the red car. So I'm changing the name to red car so that I remember what it is. So again, I just click on this, click on name and then type in the, uh, the name that I want. So red car in this case. And let's go ahead and set up an auto tracker for the red car. So I've clicked on the name red car there. Now I'm gonna click on auto tracker. And now to, to have it auto track, I just need to do shift control and then click on a spot that's easily recognizable on the cart here. And I'm pretty sure that's gonna be this little corner of the tape because that's gonna be easily recognizable. See, nothing else really has a, a, a white splotch with a red splotch like this in the video. I think I would like to move that just a little bit. Um, let's try that again. Let's do control shift here. Okay, yeah, I like that one better. Okay, so let's go with, let's zoom out here and let's go with search. And so now it is automatically following my red car. Of course, not going anywhere yet. Now the red car is going somewhere. And yeah, those data points are appearing in the same spot on the car. I can also look at the template and match and see that they match pretty well. So I'm pretty happy with that one. So I've got my, my tracking data for the red car. Again, this is following the same procedure that we followed in the first graph in the first video. Now what I need to do is add a marker for the blue car. So let's go back to the beginning here. There we go. And now I want to I want to create a point mass to follow the blue car. So all I have to do is click on create point mass. So I'm creating a new point mass. I'm not overriding the other one. I'm creating a new one. So here, let's change this one to blue car. So we changed the name to blue car, but it would be nice if it's data points were blue as well. So I click on this and I go down to color and I have my little color palette come up here. Let's just grab any blue that will do. And yeah, you know, just to make things different, let's also change its marker. So these are called footprints on here. It's currently set to be diamond. Let's go with circle just so, just so that they look um, as different as possible. Um, this will give me a radius and bold, et cetera, to try to control. So this is, this is how you can make your graphs look different. And now what I can do, I've got my tracking data for red. Now I need to get my tracking data for blue. So I click on blue here and then I click on auto tracker, just like before. Let's zoom in over here. We'll do control shift click. And I am happy with that blue splotch, white splotch. That should be good. And so we'll zoom out and now we'll click on search. And again, keep your eye on the template and the match. You see that they match pretty well. You can also keep your eye on the blue circles here. They are following that corner really well. And so now what I've got 
is a, oops, excuse me. I've got a series of red dots following the red car and I've got a series of blue dots following the blue car. And all I had to do was follow the same procedure that we followed in episode one. I just have to do it twice. I go click, I create, I click on create and then point mass for one, click on create and then point mass again for the other one, give them the different names, give them different markers. It's the same process, you're just doing it twice, one for each of the objects in the video. And of course, as always, make sure you click and drag the clip back to the beginning because if you start auto tracking at the end, it will just give you the last frame and it's not terribly helpful. Now there is one other thing that's different about these two that I will need Tracker to keep track of, and that is this blue car is just a blue car, but this red car is, is identical to the blue one, but it has an extra mass on the top. And so I need to go in and add masses to these folks. So I click on red car. And then what I do is I go down to define. This is where I can define different properties about the red car. And I happen to have in my notes here that this is a quarter of a kilogram. So zero point, so let's double click on this. We'll type in 0 0.25, or excuse me, it's half of a kilogram. The carts themselves are a quarter of a kilogram. The bar adds another quarter. So this is half of a kilogram. We'll press enter. So now for the red car's mass, I've got half of a kilogram. And then for the blue car, this one is the one that's only a quarter of a kilogram, so we'll enter that and press enter. So for the blue car, I've got a mass of 0.25. For the red car, I've got a mass of 0.5. That's going to be important in a minute when we get to uh, to the, the momentum and kinetic energy, but we'll get to that in a second. For right now, what I'm interested in is looking at their graphs. Now, the way the graph is set up by default is I can look at the blue car or the red car. So here I've got the red car's position. You can see it starts out at rest and then starts to launch. Or I can look at the blue car's position. It starts out with a pretty good positive velocity and then it comes down with a negative velocity. If I want to look at both of them, and I do, then I just right click on here. And this is where I click on this option compare with. This is where you have one graph that you want to compare with another graph. So click on compare with. And then you just select the object that you wanted to compare to. And you're selecting objects here, not graphs. They're always going to show you the same quantity on the vertical axis. So when you select X, it'll show both of their X positions. If you select Y, it'll show both of their Y positions. So you just select the object you want to compare with, click OK. And here I've got my two carts. So I've got my red car, zero velocity, positive velocity, my blue car, positive velocity, negative velocity. Uh, now, of course, I would actually like to look at the velocity. So let's click on the vertical axis label here and let's go down to VX velocity X component and this is where it gets really interesting because this is where I can see the velocity of the blue car before the collision the velocity of the red car before the collision not sure what that data points doing down there we'll just ignore that one and then here I've got the velocity of the red car after the collision here I've got the velocity of the blue car after the collision because this is what you're interested in a collision problem you're interested in the velocity before and the velocity after and this compare with feature allows you to easily see all of that information that you need in one single graph because on this graph I can see pretty clearly that the red cart leaves with a velocity that's a little bit more than half of the blue car's original velocity and that the blue car leaves with a velocity that's right around negative 0.1, so about 25% of its original velocity. So there's some neat math you can do with that. Uh, but all that math is based on momentum. Fortunately, uh, Tracker will also show you momentum. So if you click on the vertical axis label, come down here to PX for momentum X component. Momentum is the cart's mass times its velocity. And so since we've entered in the masses, we can click on this to see the momentum of each of the carts. So here, starting out, so, so think of this little crosshair, this little X, this is the collision itself. In fact, if you go back and watch the video, wait for the collision, boom, there's the collision right here where this one starts to slow down, this one starts to speed up. Look at where we are in the graph. We've got the red cart speeding up, the blue cart slowing down. And so as we inch this forward, we move after the collision, we get to the, to the post-collision state where they now have their relatively constant velocities afterwards. So this little X here is where the collision is happening. Uh, but let's take a look at this. So before the collision, red cart has zero momentum. Makes sense, it's not moving. The blue cart has a momentum of about 0.1. Uh, the units on that are kilogram meters per second. Uh, that is not named after anybody. If you come up with something clever about momentum, you can potentially get that named after yourself. So we've got a momentum of 0.1. Then after the collision, 
our red car actually gets a little bit more momentum than that. It gets 0.12 uh, uh, kilogram meters per second. Now that momentum has to be canceled out by something else because the total momentum in the collision has to be conserved. It has to stay consistent from the beginning to the end. And so it gets canceled out by the negative momentum down here. And again, it's easiest to see this having both of the sets of data on the same graph thanks to that compare with feature that we were able to use. And then I can do a similar thing with graphing the kinetic energy. So since this uh, collision is mediated by magnets, the kinetic energy should roughly be consistent before and after the collision. So I've got about uh, just under 0.02 here. Here I've got a 0.015 plus just under a 0.005. Uh, so that total ends up being about the same. So this is where uh, putting in the mass is important because without the mass, I can't find out the momentum or the kinetic energy. So that's an overview of how to use the compare with feature. Let me show you one other interesting feature you can use with when you have two objects like this, especially with a collision, this is especially important. Let's go, let's go back up to create, click on create and then click on center of mass. The idea of a center of mass is that you're taking two, two or more objects. It can be any number of objects you want. But you're taking any number of objects and you're kind of grouping them together. And the code, the, the and tracker is now going to keep track of the kind of weighted center of the two. So the way you calculate center of mass is you take the position of this one, multiply it by its math, pl mass plus the position of this one, multiply it by its mass. Then you divide by the total mass. So when you have both of these in here, you've got the position of the center of mass. Now I want you to watch the center of mass, the green dots here, that's the, that's the location of the center of mass. I want you to watch that throughout the video and you tell me what you notice about the green trail. What do you notice about that green trail as you go from before the collision to after the collision? You can also look up here in the graph to see, collision happens about here and yet the center of mass just continues along the way. Actually, let's rename this one. Let's rename this uh, center of mass for red plus blue. Because it's a property of collisions that even though the velocities of the two cars stays the same, the center of mass continues along its merry way, not really caring about the collision. You can also see that on the velocity graph. So the velocity of the center of mass is roughly constant. Remember I told you to watch out for wiggles like this uh, because it zoomed in really far. Well, let's actually look at this. Let's right click, click on compare with, because you can also compare the center of mass with the individual velocities. So here we've got the blue car in blue, the red car in red, and the center of mass in green. You see that the velocity of the blue one changes, the velocity of the red one changes, but the velocity of that center of mass stays consistent. If we wanted to look at the momentum and kinetic energy of the center of mass, uh, I can click on uh, the center of mass here, click on define, and then give it its own mass. I'm not sure why Tracker doesn't automatically put in the total mass of the two objects, because that should, I think, pretty clearly be the, the, the mass of the center of mass, but maybe there's some reason you want to change the, the mass of this thing to something else. Either way, you go through the same process, click on uh, the object, click on define, enter the total mass, so that's gonna be a 0.25 from this one and a 0.5 from this one for a total of 0.75. Um, and so now I can look at the momentum of the center of mass. Where did that go? That went down here. And so you can see I've got the blue decreasing, I've got the red increasing, but the green stays consistent throughout. In fact, the green originally is just the blue one, right? The, the green's momentum is originally just the blue's momentum because it's moving at this same momentum, right? That there's not any momentum coming in from the, uh, from the red cart. Okay, so those are some additional options for you as you work with uh, looking at graphs of multiple objects in a system. This is particularly useful in collisions. Uh, I hope that's been helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.